Excuse me, is it time for a little bit of Ultima 7? Yes, of course it's time for Ultima 7. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. You can see. Hello. I have found... This is, I have found my carpet. Oh, favorite carpet. You know, I had to go review some old footage in order to find my carpet. Um, funny story, if anybody cares to actually go back, I think it was in, uh, like, episode 16? Oh, I, that part I forget. But at one point, I leave this dungeon despise, which I happen to despise so much. Um, I picked up my, my, my shag ride. <laughs> and then mid-flight, I think I stopped about here, and then I hit F3 like this, and then I decided to teleport, which left the shag ride, I guess I'm calling it that now, uh, up in the air. So I had to hack move my way up onto this thing, uh, so that I could actually bring my party back onto it, and, uh, well, anyway, now is everything... Now everything is fantastic. Hello and welcome back to Ultima 7! Uh, what are we gonna do today? First, uh, a slight review. Um, I have been told by the... What would you call her? The Sorceress Penumbra? Uh, that I have to go find a ethereal ring. Uh, apparently in the possession of the gargoyles. The gargoyles, I think, are over here, on this island over here. Um, I, uh, I'm not sure exactly which island, like, all, I don't, I don't quite know all of these islands, I just know this is New Magentia. Dunno, dunno, uh, Serpent Spine, this is Buccaneer's Den, this is, uh, something else. Isle of the Avatar, I think? Anyway. There's a couple of things worth visiting, and I, I just don't have any friggin' idea what's over here. Maybe worth exploring at some point. Uh, I, I suppose, I suppose one day, you know, before the series ends, or at least the series for this particular part one of Ultima 7, uh, finishes, I should probably explore some of these things. For the time being, however, we're gonna go find Drexy Newsome, or... How else could his name be called? I mean, what island is this? Oh, that Buccaneer's Den. I don't want to. I don't want to touch down here yet. There is, there is story perhaps. Wait, hey, while I'm flying, ah, uh, can I find Jalome? I keep forgetting that Jalome exists. That that's a thing. I'm not sure. I can figure out which one Jalome. I might have to check a. Ugh. I might have to check out <laughs> a map. Music is. Still pretty rough in this game. Here, I'm go. Okay, I want to go south. All right. Ah, oh, God, this music. <laughs> oh, it's awful. My ears. Ah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Fair Pub Owner, for having a relaxed tune. Ah. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry, Iolo. I didn't catch that. I don't think I did brush up on my gargish. But I do still have that thing on that I turned on in the last episode that allows me to read everything. I'm still super jazzed about it. I don't have to translate anything any uh, anymore. Hang on. Let me find out what kind of a dick I am right now. Five in the morning. Yep. <laughs> what kind of a... Uh... Oh, how would I say this? Poor evil. Evil has it bad because I'm not going to sleep. Hell, I barely eat. I'm just going to go all hours of the day and night to pursue evil and destroy it. <clears throat> the gargoyle welcomes you by making a sweeping hand motion with his open hand. What does he do with the closed one? Is he just doing that sort of masturbatory kind of stroke in the air kind of thing? <laughs> to be named Betra. To be new to Turfin? Um, well... Uh, we are, our adventure is, but the avatar is not. What do I say here? I guess I'll say yes. To tell you, to talk to Terragus, the sage of the, oh, mm, sorry, Terragus the sage, or Forbrack, the tavern keeper, for information about town. Mm. To help with building locations and residents. That's one thing, I th I think this came up before when we spoke to a, a gargoyle in Britain. They These guys have a different kind of way of speaking. 
uh, I guess to suggest that they have their own language and that they have to s switch to English. And I guess, I don't know, they just never bothered to pick up the grammar exactly the same way. I don't know if this is actually charming. Maybe this is, maybe this is a good, good idea, perhaps. I suppose it is. I mean, how else are you going to have diversity in a game that doesn't have any voices? You know, you have to have something to differentiate everybody. All right, all right. I'll leave it. I'll let it go. Tell me about yourself. Betra to be the word for. Uh, that looks like there's an extra space here. Small va Oh, there is a there's a a quotation mark right there. Small valor. Little one. Hmm. To be known... Sorry. To be the town set aside for us gargoyles who wish to reside in our own culture. Ah, oh, these guys have been displaced. I think that's true. H had this been explained before? I think the gargoyle... The gargoyles... Excuse me. The Gorgoyles certainly lost their home world. Um, I think that's right. They used to live in the underground and something happened to that. And it could be I knew this before and I'm forgetting right now. But that's kind of awful. So these guys are kind of the... the kind. This is in a, a town that's sort of a reserve for them. Kind of a sweet deal to have their own island. Kind of not, too. I mean, this is kind of how Australia was started, wasn't it? It was kind of a prison colony and then it just kind of sort of became something awesome anyway to have been put here by the humans to be permitted to leave and also to reside elsewhere but to know that many humans do not like us well you're red skinned and you have horns and there are other things out there that are probably called demons and they look very similar to you wait a second now that I got my cursor poking around this man's face, are he, he, I've asked this question before of other people, but are these, these guys pupils looking to the left? Or is this a specular dot? And uh, Or is this guy just looking super mischievous right now? That's uh, that's kind of fun. Anyway, um, how about your gargoyle, gargoyle t culture? Excuse me. To have uh, many things unique to our race, other than our appearance, that distinguish us from humans. To be different, but also equal. Okay, that I'll buy. But uh, you're not really telling me much about your culture. I mean, are you traditionally left-handed? Do you have a dance you like to perform? Do you guys have marriage? I don't know. To be very ironic... <laughs> To say that the only town with an equal number of humans and gargoyles is the one where most racial conflicts occur. He shrugs. Is there a different shrug in Gargish culture? To have been unwise, perhaps, to put so many differences together. To be sad times. <sighs> Alright, well, I mean, I didn't get shit out of him. Uh, he tells me to go speak to somebody. When can we re- Oh! <laughs> um, that's a good question, Shamino. If you didn't catch that, Shamino just asked us, when can we rest? I was just saying earlier how I don't rest. Um, I wonder if that's not something I genuinely should do. You know what, let's just go until it's absolutely necessary. This guy looks like a tavern owner. Look, he even has a tavern owner's harness. Because, of course, a tavern owner would need to have that. Um, you may know, uh, you may remember from our last interaction with, so far, not from our last interaction with the gargoyle, but from our interaction with the gargoyle back in Britain. I forget what that guy's name was. Inforlem? Anyway, uh, we did learn part of the sort of gargoyle cast system and how gargoyles with wings tend to be the much more intelligent types. Apparently they are just higher up in intelligence and in... I guess usefulness. I don't know. Uh, but this guy, like, like I don't, I don't know how how much weight I should put on this type of a cast system because I've never really known a cast system um, out of my own experience to be something worth paying very much attention to. But uh, perhaps in this Gargish culture, this is a legit thing. Uh, maybe these guys just seriously are more developed or more evolved versions of themselves. 
And, uh, yeah, alright, so this guy's supposed to be smart, I guess. The gargoyle tending bar lifts a tankard to you. Uh, to be Forbrack. I wonder what... Th their names tend to be words. So, to mean strong arm in the language of the gargoyles. Okay, tell me about the gargoyles. To know many of the residents in town and some of the troubles. <gasps> troubles? Ooh, side quests? Oh, you're not going to tell me about one of those side quests, are you? To know of only two side quests. To see the conflict between the shrines and the fellowship. And to know of the struggles of the wingless ones. My, 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 what do I start with? Um... Um... <laughs> this is probably something I could do later. How about you tell me about the shrine versus the fellowship? To believe there are disagreements between the old philosophy and the new. To expect no violence, but to ask you to seek the trainer and healer. To know they are observant and may have seen something. To also suggest you speak with the members of the fellowship. Ah, uh, okay, why? What about the trainer? To be named in Forlem? Oh. Uh, what is... Is in Forlem not the guy that was in Britain? Or did I... Am I just remembering this name from somewhere else? To be very strong anyway? Okay, great. The healer. Whoa. To be named in Manilem. In Manilem. In Manilem? I feel like in Manilem is a spell. I feel like I've seen those words invoked not all that long ago. Could I be wrong about that? Hmm. Anyway. Uh, so I'll, I... Maybe I'll go find those guys? I gotta find Drax and Newsome anyway, so maybe I'll just happen by them. Uh, what members do I recommend you speak to their leader and their clerk? What? What is a clerk? I know such a thing exists. Is that like a secretary, I guess? Or an assistant to the leader? Uh, the leader... To be very friendly, to be called Kwan. And the clerk? To be extremely violent. <laughs> what a team! He shakes his head. To be named Runeb. Which means red mist. To be all he leaves a foe after combat? Jesus Christ, do these guys... Does he vaporize them? Does he... Whoa. <laughs> Such a thing is a weird th is a weird thing to say. Uh, in now today in 2017, the age of vaping. Um, <laughs> does he vape people? <laughs> Sorry. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I'm not over it. Ah. <laughs> uh. Okay, no, I, I gotta move on. So, <laughs> something else now. Please tell me. To watch wingless friends be discontented, I read discontinued, uh, with their lot. To wonder why, but never ask. To talk to the healer and the train Again? To expect they will have seen evidence, if there is evidence to be seen. Okay, uh... No. Okay, yeah, tell me later, later, later. All right. All right, not so bad. Uh, that's not the door I took. This is a good way I've, I'm have i only just noticing. Uh, for me to know whether or not I've been to a place is to just leave doors open. The old way that I used to have, do I have hack moving open? Yes. Um, I would know for damn sure if I've been somewhere if the door would just friggin' not be on its hinges. <laughs> I was just too lazy to double click. Oh, I'm a terrible person. But this is, consider the game that's for, not forcing me, but that is, uh, perhaps incentivizing, uh, me to do such things. You know, the game, the game is, is surely a great, uh, how would you call it? It's a great hobby in itself. You can really spend ages and ages of time pl playing this game, right? Whoa, sorry, I just wanted to get this out of the way. Uh, excuse me. Oh, look at that. Uh... I didn't realize he was going to wake up so soon. But, like, this game has so much depth to it that you could easily just put 
gads of time into this game. I mean, all right, another thing to consider. I didn't, I didn't think uh, to bring this up before, but consider, right? Most games these days, here in the year of our Lord 2017, most games have maps, and this game sort of has a map, but the only way you can actually tell where you are without cheating like I have been doing uh, is to have a sextant on your person to refer to it. It gives you direction or sorry coordinates and then you sort of guess kind of where you are uh, relative to the map that came with the game. You know, I mean, it, it's this is a whole thing that you can dive into. I am doing a lot of these cheating things to save time. I know I'm not getting the 100% experience, but still, I mean... <sighs> it's... I, I suppose it's not unreasonable that people way back in 92 weren't really considering how a game was going to age 20 years on or whatever, you know? Anyway, the gargoyle has a pleasant expression on his face. Hello, pleasant expression, Mr. Uh, to be named uh, known as Inforlem! I need to talk to you! Uh, in for lem means make strong one. Hmm. So, in Gorgish culture, are names decided and given based on your profession? Or is this type of thing given to you at birth and then that's it? You are in for lem. You're gonna make strong ones. And it, then it's just up to you to interpret what that means, you know? I mean, I'd say, peop I'd say to people whenever I'm leaving, uh, like, an interaction, have a good one all the time. So, make strong one. Does that mean I'm gonna have a strong time? <laughs> um, or is this a one as in a cold one that you might drink at the end of a long day? Make a strong one, would you be a brewer then? I don't know, I'm just making this shit up. What's, uh, yeah, to train others, to be strong and powerful, to sell weapons also. Hmm. Uh, I'm just gonna skip over to here to, to conflicts. To know of the conflicts between the altars and the fellowship, but to have no information. To suggest you see Quan, the fellowship leader, and ask him. That sounds like the opposite of what I ought to do. I mean, Quan is the leader of the fellowship here? Uh, I, I have plenty of reason to be suspicious of those guys. Uh, but who knows? Uh, who knows, perhaps, maybe, like, despite being a fellowship leader here, maybe he can still be a good guy, and... Uh, tell me about others. To tell you, Forbrack knows much about Turfin and its residences, and about its conflicts. Didn't he tell me to, to speak with you and one other guy in Forlem? No, that you're in Forlem, excuse me. He's the tavern keeper. The tavern keeper told me to tell you or ask you. Well, all right. There's one other guy I could speak to. That all that almost definitely looks like uh that uh the fellowship thing. What could this be? Is he a a shopkeep? There's no sign. All right. Draxy Newsome I expect is a winged one, so I wouldn't figure that this guy is that. Is Monsieur? It is now all oh, a quarter to six. I'm not gonna blame this guy. I wouldn't be up at six. No, sorry, I wouldn't be up before six. I would be up right at six. Yeah, sure. You see a very distraught gargoyle. Whoa! He's so distraught. Look at him. He's just displeased. Although his uh, tusks betray him. I mean, he's kind of got a happy face going on right there. Anyway. Sarpling. Okay, that's your name, huh? Oh, you're- hang on, you're missing a horn. Kinda. Gosh. To be an important part of my life, the Fellowship is. To support the Fellowship early. Maybe I don't want to know your opinion. To provide various magics and items in Turfin. Alright, well, forget it. I don't know if I want to talk to you any further. Is there anything in this direction? I'm gonna guess no. There can't be very much more island left. This game really is just not big. Oh! This is locked. How intriguing. Uh... 
<laughs> oh. That's too bad. That's really too bad. I was hoping there was gonna be treasure inside or something incriminating or... Uh, something else. Hello? You have a s you have your own soundtrack. You see a frowning gargoyle? How could you even tell? Uh, to be named Slamo. <laughs> Hello, Slamo. Uh, to know my name, uh, to to know my name if I were winged. He's um. Hmm. Uh, I'm not sure I'm catching that. But anyway, to be the gardener, he shrugs. Nothing more. He doesn't seem to be super interested with talking to me. Oh, uh, well. Alright, then. I'll just leave you alone, then, Mr. Gardener. Thank you. Slamo, the gardener. <laughs> I feel like there should have been, like, a wrestler named Slamo once. I know once upon a time, the, uh... In WWE, there were uh, awards called Slammies. That's not related at all, but, you know, anyway. The gargoyle gives you a menacing glare. Judging by his size, he would make a formidable foe. Not against seven of us. What's your name? Runeb. Oh, God. You're Runeb, huh? Well, alright, I guess, uh... I mean, I have to speak to you... To some point? I was recommended to speak to you anyway. Hello. To mean busy one, he says sarcastically. That's not what I heard. What's your job? To be the fellowship, air quotes, clerk. To be the fellowship murderer, more like, probably. Uh, to have more important things to do now. Ask me later, human. Alright, cool. I mean, if you're just sleeping. I'm not gonna say that he's wrong. Sleeping's pretty important. I don't know how much sleep he might have gotten. Maybe he's overdoing it. Maybe I should be more critical of him. More critical of somebody's sleeping patterns before I even become accustomed to them? Ah, that's that's too much. I know I can be judgy. But that seems like a bit much. Right off the bat, yeah, that's that's a bit much. I can kind of tell what this is. This is yes, 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 yes. Yes, of course, yes. At least these people are waking up, like... <laughs> I want to say on time. Upon my arrival! <laughs> you see a winged gargoyle. Noticing you, he turns and says, To be welcome, human. To need assistance. Uh... To be the one named Quan. Okay. To have no meaning in Gargish. To be a special name. Specific to me, he smiles. That's a... Hmm. Is that a sincere smile or is that... I don't know, like a I'm hiding something smile. These guys don't really have eyebrows, do they? They have kind of... This, they have maybe similar eye features to humans, but... I haven't seen eyebrows. It's a little bit odd. It's odd to me, I guess, but um, I mean, for fuck's sake, I'm looking at a gargoyle. Anyway, um... So, hello, Quan. Mr. Doesn't mean anything, Quan. To head the Fellowship in Turfin? Surfin? To be the only gargoyle city in Britannia, Turfin is. To have fewer gargoyles in the land than during your last visit to Britannia, human. He shakes his head. Ah, you were around then, were you? Or is he aware of who I am? That would be very responsible of him, actually. Yep. Um, tell me about the gargs. To suggest talking to Runeb, the fellowship clerk, or, uh, Quaven. Quaven. To have jobs needing knowledge of others in Turfin. He grins apologetically. To be too busy to know all in Turfin. Lord, buddy, I hear ya. To be too busy to know everything, period. To have succumbed to the effects of disease and famine that have recently struck Britannia. To tell you that gargoyles breed less frequently and we have not had the time to make up for losses in our population. To have new hope, however, he grins, with the fellowship. 
Yeah. That would not be a phrase I would trust anymore if you swapped the fellowship with friggin' anything like with Jesus or with the will of God or maybe with cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's good enough. I'm going to leave it there. Um, <laughs> okay, well, I mean, this guy didn't actually give me any indication that there's shit going on. He tells me to go find Reneb. Reneb tells me to go find him. Uh, what was this? Oh, yeah, in Forlim, I guess. Um, what's uh, the sign here? Recreation Center. Is this a place for recreating things? Hello, sir. <laughs> this guy's face is just... <laughs> the gargoyle, a contented grin on his face, greets you with a handshake. Oh, what a nice friendly man. Kind, mm, I, I kind of enjoy how there seems to be a, mm, a... There's a difference between how people wear their fellowship necklaces. Some of them on their foreheads, some of them around the neck. Uh, I wonder if that indicates something. Or if it's really just a matter of taste. Anyway, it's not important. To be known as... Hello. <laughs> to mean problem finder. <laughs> to be an observant one. I already like you. I like... Plenty. People who like to find problems and... I don't know if they're actually able to solve them, but I, I enjoy being able to point out things myself. So uh, maybe I can connect with him a little better. Just a moment as I take a sip of something. Mm -mm. That, <laughs> that was something, all right. Um, hello, what is your job? To be the master of the recreation facility and learning center. To be in charge of much information valuable to the gargoyle race. Oh, so you're actually an important guy. Well done. Well done, yes. Uh, tell me about... So, I mean, I guess this is a cultural center, not a recreation center. You shouldn't have called it that. Uh, to be a good place for gargoyles to go to exercise their muscles. To have many resources available. Yes, you have a carpet, you have shelves, you even have dummies. Very nice, including stuffed bags to punch and practice fighting skills. Hmm. I've always found it a little curious that, um, fighting skills isn't something that's a little bit more prevalent in, in real life society. I mean, there's a lot of people that do take uh, martial arts and they practice it. And they seem to benefit quite a lot from it uh, in their lives. And I find it, yeah, I find it's a little bit curious. I mean, I guess that's just a sign of the times. There's so much about what we began as that we're abandoning with time as we transition from being humans to being people. If you understand kind of what I've, what I'm, what I'm putting down. If, you, if you're picking up what I'm putting down, so to speak, uh... Maybe this is easily expanded upon. Simply, uh, we were humans. Now today in society, we are people and we must be people with each other. But we cannot forget the things that make us human. I guess it's kind of the difference between the animals that we are and the social creatures that we are, I guess. Anyway, that's a, that's a, that's a summary. Um, so, yeah, I guess... I guess over time we've just had to abandon things. No, we haven't had to, but we've simply chosen to because so much time is spent on trying to survive through the use of jobs and shit. Um, anyway, <laughs> me, like, I feel like there is always going to be room for, such a, for something like this, like martial arts or for, you know, physical practice because we still need to have a pretty firm connection with our, our bodies, being that... <laughs> We literally are bodies, uh, alive or not. Um, and, uh, yeah, just everything is better once you have things like this. Uh, anyway, anyway, this is a greater topic and I'm kind of stumbling around it. Um, how about the learning thing? 
Learning's pretty cool, right? To be located in the same building as the recreation center, the one that you're in right now, uh-huh, <laughs> to provide an excellent atmosphere for strengthening gargoyle minds. Hmm. To have a large supply of books and educational material. I haven't seen them yet. I'm curious to see them, actually. You have books? To want to know about the organization or the tenants? Well, let's see what you got to say about the tenants, yeah. To apply an optimistic order of thought through the triad of inner strength. I'm done. Thanks. <laughs> Avatar, you fucking moron. I, s I do not enjoy that I can too easily walk on the other side of a door through pathfinding, close it behind my friends, and now I just gotta let them open the door for themselves? Man. Anyway. Encyclopedia Britannica. Uh, sorry, Britannia. Another volume in a long series of books detailing every known geographical location and historical personage. This work covers a lot. I'm abandoning that. Oh, hey, there's a map. Brommer's Britannia. Betwixt the covers of this atlas is a detailed description of the entire continent of Britannia and the nearby islands. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. I was going for more, like, Gargish culture. But you're just trying to teach shit for integrating gargoyles into the Britannian world. That's not necessarily the right thing for them to learn. I mean, it is for integration, but it's, uh, you know, let's preserve them or something. I'm gonna read your book before I speak with you. Thy message received by Four Lem. Translated by Jill. Within this diary is revealed the poor treatment of the gargoyle race since the return of the Codex 200 years ago. That must be what happened in the last game. <clears throat> to have noticed that humans remain uncomfortable with us even after 200 years. Jesus Christ. Well, I mean, they don't have the internet. Everybody's isolated. Probably, like, all the hippies live in one part of the town and everybody else is just unhappy but elsewhere. I want to say that we have progressed as a people, but maybe now 2017 is not exactly the right time to say it. Who knows how this year will continue, but anyway, I mean, early here in January, actually no, we're late in January right now. Uh who who could who could say? God. Within yes, I said that to have noticed that humans remain uncomfortable with us, they have given us our own island to populate, but this gift, but is this gift designed to keep us segregated? That's a good question. To have wondered why so few gargoyles leave Turfin. To have no more doubts, having lived in Vesper. To see the hatred for our race. You see, to see, to feel the disgust. To understand not. For it was humans who destroyed our land, not gargoyles. To seek communication. To seek friendship. To seek trust. To speculate that none are forthcoming. To ask the humans why. To ask the... Uh, to see the terror and loathing. And to know there will be no answer given. To hope for a future of harmony, but to realize that with segregation, there can be none. To hope for education of both races, for our children and ourselves. To hope and to live. That's a pretty good book, man. Did you read it or write it? Well, no, uh, I guess not. You see an aged gargoyle, bent and withered, with a regal bearing. Not a ball bearing, a regal bearing. <laughs> he smiles gently. That's too gentle. Uh, hello. To have been many years, to be your old acquaintance, Muffin Top, the Draxidiusum. Hello, you have no eyes. Your or mm, blue eyes, I guess. Ah, uh, this is a weird place. I, something I'm only just, I guess, waking up to. Ah, uh, as deep in as we are, I'm still only discovering aspects to this game. This is a great place that... This is a great game that would benefit quite a lot um, from conversation systems that we do have in new games today. Like, say, the, the well-respected Bioware uh, games. 
where you can have a conversation and you'll have choices, much like we have here, but they aren't constrained the same way, or basically at all, uh, it, it, like they are here. You know, I ask a guy's name, I ask him his job, I have buy as an option, and other things just come up as they come up, but, like, why should I have to ask your job now, or else not be able to continue the conversation? It seems wrong. I mean, mild acquaintance, I should be able to ask him, how the fuck have you been, dog? It's been 200 years, or something like that. To ask about job, capital J? To be unable to say that I truly have one at this time. To notice how the young ones no longer look to me for guidance anymore, or guidance. To look more to Terragus, or more often to those in the fellowship. What a tragedy. Uh, what about Terragus or Terigus? To be truly a fine young gargoyle. To be one of the most sensible, too. To have seen fit to adhere to the old ways, the ways of the altars. To see that some of the youngest still look up to him, but the majority seem to have been wooed away by the glamour of the Fellowship. Mm. So glittery, that fe Fellowship. To tell you that his weanling, Inamo, Inamo, is intrinsic at this time. <laughs> is he? Um. <laughs> do you remember this guy? <laughs> ah, day one, this guy had already been murdered. Oh, if you don't remember, this is kind of what spurned my whole quest. Hello, um, to be a fine young gargoyle, mm-hmm, <laughs> to have been raised by Terragus, keeper of the altars. Ah, to have left town because of the tension between the altar worshippers and the Fellowship. To have been angry and distrustful of the Fellowship. Ah. Okay, the picture is starting to fill in. Great. To have news of him? Oh, that's a question. Uh, well... Being that the Avatar speaks for truth and honesty uh, and telling people the things that they ought to know and, and such. Um. <coughs> to be excellent. Have you seen him? Um, do you know how he is faring to be well? Uh. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Uh, I think. Oh, you might want to sit down for this. He's murdered. <laughs> to be terrible news. To have been such a fine gargoyle. To know Terragus will be heartbroken. To be wishing not for him to grieve, but to take to him the news immediately. To be better to hear it from you. Alright. Alright, I like this guy. He's he's not the type of guy to say, no, you got you you can't tell him. He'll be crushed. He sh he mustn't. Yeah, alright. That's good. That's good. I like him. Yeah, yeah. To know not what to think of the fellowship and their tenets. To seem not dangerous, but not to be following the old ways. The ways of passion, diligence, and control. Now, ah, that's intriguing. I wonder what their system is like. Probably something that would have been uh, explored upon uh, in uh, the previous game. Or in previous games. Especially the one where you actually interact with the, uh, the underworld. And the, the, gob the goblin, the gargoyle uh, universe and such. To feign worship. <laughs> to the shrines here in Terrafin, of course. Especially to control, but not yet to trust them. To wait and see. To have forceful leaders who espouse doctrines of submission, he shrugs. To be genuinely inspired, perhaps, and perhaps not. Hmm. To inform you that the fellowship is directed by two winged brethren. To be called Runeb and Quan. Yes, I've met them. Runeb, to mean, in your language, Red Mist. To have been given that name because that is all he leaves behind of an adversary in battle. Yep, yeah, he vapes him. Before his conversion by the Fellowship, to have been known as a particularly cruel and dangerous gargoyle. Yeah, okay. So I'm probably going to have to murder him at some point, right? All seven of us? Ah, uh, to be the interesting one, Quan. To be a strong, powerful personality. To be of uh, so from one of the families most able to claim noble lineage in our society. To have always been most self-serving, striving only to gain status and wealth for himself. Oh, he's a jerk too. 
he seemed kind of tolerable before, to have certainly changed his true his tune since joining the Fellowship. Uh, this doesn't seem like something that an English as a second language type of person would really say. I don't know, maybe that's just my taste. To have my doubts, however, that his goals have changed as well. Hmm. Mm -hmm. To be quite comfortable for our needs is Turfin. To be, however, unfortunate that it was thought necessary to isolate us from humans. To have engendered resentment and tension in our younger generations. To remember not the old days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The days when we had to work together to survive. He smiles, reliving old memories. And then he shakes his head. To have had to give up many much what when we moved to <clears throat> to have had to give up many much many much yes when we moved give up what to have been many favorite possessions to be too much trouble to move so much he sighs are you gonna tell me about the thing i'm here to talk about that's a thing this is a blank screen to especially regret selling my <gasps> ethereal ring, huh? Oh my! Oh, to be indeed a lovely treasure. To have been quite useful, too. A shame to have been really, to have been really, uh, to have had to sell it. To have been one of my favorites. Hmm. Why? To, uh, I'm not even completely sure what it's for. To have sold most of my treasures when we were... <clears throat> asked, shall we say, to move to the island. To have all happened rather quickly, you see. To have sold most to the Sultan of Spectrum? Sultan? To have seemed nice enough for a human to be a bit mad he is, even for a human. To tell you he lives on an island just to the west of us. To know, at least, that my prized possessions would be safe in his hands. Safe? Hmm. He nods his head. To be rumored to have one of the best guarded vaults in all of Britannia. Really? Challenge accepted. To be supposedly enchanted. To know not the details. Alright. Uh, later. To be lonely here now. Blah, 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 blah. Yep. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me again, God. Woo! Oh, man. I think I got what I need. Um, let's see. Everybody sit down. Everybody sit down on this nice, like, copy-paste from a movie theater. I think... <sighs> Is it this island? Is it that island? We're just gonna go. We gonna go! That's it. Uh, it's not this one. Nope. Memory compels me. I know what that island is certainly certainly for. Yes, I think it's this one. Yes, yes, yes. My memories are are for this game, I should say. My memories for this game are many but scattered. And I do remember that island. We will be going back there inevitably. Don't you worry. Uh... <laughs> Hi. Hang on, let me get my buds. Um, hello, sir. Sitting, waiting for me? You see a nobleman, all alone, with a demented gleam in his eye. Uh, he looks pretty normal, actually. Um, who in blazes art thou? The man asks. His attitude is that of someone who was just interrupted from something terribly important. Hmm. Ah. Uh, who in blazes am I? Oh, do I honor him with the knowledge that I am the Avatar? No! I don't know who the fuck this guy is. I mean, I know who the fuck this guy is, but, uh... No, he doesn't need to know. Martingo? How... Okay. Martingo shakes your hand, but acts thoroughly disinterested. I'm thrilled. This is how I find out his name? I shake his hand and then, so I guess, like in an MMO or something, his name just appears over his head? Martingo? He turns to his right and speaks to no one. 
What? Oh, really? I do not think Muffin Top looks particularly brainless. We shall have to see, shall we not? He turns back to you and grins. Uh-huh. Okay, now you tell me your name. The nobleman looks at you with impatience. I am Mertingo, the Sultan of Spectrum. Is that all right with thee? He rolls his eyes. No, it's not, buddy. He turns to his right side and whispers again to an imaginary person. I believe we have been uh, an ignoramus in our hands. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about your job, I guess. I am the Sultan of Spectrum. What is that brain the size of a pea? Do not question. Twas. Sorry, do not answer. Twas a rhetorical question. Yeah. He thinks me a fool. He turns to his left side. And whispers again to an imaginary person. Does thou not think his brain is the size of a pea? I do. He giggles. Uh, conspiratorially. <laughs> With his invisible friend. Um, there's no word that, like, I, I, I began reading this word and I thought it constipated. But there's no, like, there's no word for constipatedly or something like that. <laughs> Although I kind of wish there was. Maybe there is and I'm not aware of it. That would be fun. Martingo then pulls out a banana and begins to peel it. Mm, I'm going to ask about the banana. It seems topical. Oh, forgive my manners. Wouldst thou like a banana? Uh, sure. Well, it'll cost you three gold coins. Still want one? <laughs> no, that's a relief. I only had one left. Oh, man, could I buy it now? I, I, listen, I got dollars, dog. I want to have that one banana you own so that you could not have a banana. Anyway, I'm just a jerk. So, I'm going to play with this guy a little bit longer before we go delving into an ethereal ring business. Come on, don't insult my intelligence. Surely you know what a sultan is. Canst thou not see mine harem? Yeah, look at them all. Um, let's uh, let's just go along with it. Lovely, aren't they? Mm-hmm. They're very lovely, all of them, each of them. Each day I enjoy a different one. Thou canst not imagine how much fun being a sultan really is. He leans over and kisses an invisible cheek. I can't tell what he's kissing. Today I am enjoying Lucinda. He grins broadly. I hope that's picking up on the mic. I'm actually moving to the left and right each time he speaks to the left and right. Anyway, tell me about Lucinda. She's beautiful, isn't she? Ooh. Martingo leans over and sticks his tongue in an ear that isn't there. <laughs> um, I don't know how to keep going with this. I mean, I'm going to keep going with this, but... Is this the Avatar's imagination that's filling in? Or is this the Sultan of Spectrum actually doing these things and, like... Oh, I don't know. Anyway, tell me about Spectrum. Tis the island you are standing upon, sir. He turns to the invisible person on his left and whispers, You're correct that this guy really is a fool. Martingo turns back to you. As I said, I am the sultan here. I'm the master of all of these subjects. All of these, he gestures around the room. All of them. Iolo whispers to you, This fellow's quite daft. Be careful. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna... All right. To business. Martingo looks suspicious. Art thou wanting to steal mine ethereal ring? He turns to his imaginary friend and whispers, You were right! Our guest looks like a thief. Yes, kitty. I don't know if the kitty is able to meow loud enough for the mic to pick it up. Let's see if I can move the mic over here. What do you think, kitty? Yeah, now she doesn't want to meow because the mic's right next to her. Um, He turns back to you and smiles. Yes, I do have an ethereal ring. I bought it from the king of the gargoyles. It, mm. Is he still a king? Ah, whatever. What was his name? He leans towards the invisible companion on his right. What? Oh, yes. Draxanism. I knew it all the time. 
He turns back to you. Send my vault. What's in your vault? Martingo's eyes light up. Ooh, 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 my vault is the most protected vault in all of Britannia. No one, and I mean no one, can steal anything from my vault. Challenge accepted. Again. I have many fine treasures in there. He turns to Lucinda and bites a non-existent earlobe. That must look weird. How long did it take you for, to, for you to guess that this is that this guy is biting a non-existent earlobe? I mean, he could be eating like a banana that someone else had peeled and is holding out for him or something, right? Could that be? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. What treasures you got in there? Tell me about them. I collect magical items. The vault is full of them. Chock full brimming of them. I, including this ring you mentioned. Good. Uh, the vault's security is my secret. Feel free to try and enter it. In fact, I dare you. If you can succeed in getting inside, you're welcome to take anything. He laughs. All you need is the key. He laughs with his imaginary harem, <laughs> as if they were all laughing with him. Yep, I'm sure you're going to find it. He breaks up, laughing so hard that tears begin falling down his cheeks. I might murder him later. Fine, go away. It shall do thee good to go away. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, yeah. Oh, this is the this is the vault, huh? Okay, okay. I remember this. I remember this. <laughs> Combat. All right, that's it then. <laughs> well, man, there used to be such such struggle way back in the day when uh when I had when I used to actually play this game a little bit more legitimately and uh, I, I remember this stone gargoyle is actually a f somewhat formidable foe and I would basically do whatever I friggin could in order to beat it you know I, I would steal a keg of dynamite from Britannia Castle or from Britain I should say place it in here try to escape back out try to activate it have it blow up and then I would still need to to fight real hard because of course I didn't train up my people at the time or I didn't have a good team for fighting with and you know I I I didn't know what I was doing I I was I was a shit type of person uh here I'll swap this out for a a weapon of genuine value here cuz I think the I think the wand has limited charges anyway here's that vault look at all the splendor in here there is one ethereal ring and three other rings that I will probably find no value from. And, um, okay. That's, uh, that's that. I'm gonna quick save right over here. And I'm going to kill this man. There he is. Dead. Just out of interesting kind of um, trivia, this man no longer possesses a banana. Okay, anyway. Friends, I think we have progressed enough for one episode. We're gonna take this ethereal ring all the way back. Where was it? Here? I'm not gonna teleport. But anyway, next episode, what we're gonna do is take this to Penumbra and we're gonna find out just what in the shit the next move is. I think it's to go find the sphere. Um, and that's going to be a whole thing. I don't, oh, I'm not really, I don't know if I should look forward to that or not, because that means going into another dungeon. But anyway, we'll see you then, ladies and gentlemen. If you liked this episode, please like, comment, or subscribe. Tell me if you like it. Tell me if you want to see me play another game. I would really appreciate it. Uh, thank you again. See you soon.